Welcome everyone. Today we will start with sequence and series chapter of uh, class 11 mathematics. Essentially it is a continuation of what we studied in the arithmetic progression. So um, I would first suggest you to have a look at all the videos in the arithmetic progression lecture playlist and uh, once you have done that, you can continue with these lectures. So in the coming up lectures, we will essentially continue what we were discussing before uh, with the general term of an arithmetic progression, uh, sum of n terms of an uh, AP and so on. But here we will introduce one new progression called the geometric progression. And then we will also look into different concepts like arithmetic mean, geometric mean, relationship between arithmetic and geometric mean, some of first n terms of squares of natural numbers, some of first n terms of cubes of natural numbers, and uh, many more exciting problems. So this chapter is going to be exciting. Before uh, starting, we'll just uh, have a formal look into what do we mean by sequence, series, and progression. So by sequence, we just mean, uh, when we say a collection of objects as a sequence, we mean that there is some sense of first term, second term, third term, something like that. So essentially what we mean is like uh, when we say temperature recorded in a week. So there will be some temperature like on the very first day, second day, third day, fourth day and so on. So there or uh, the salary uh, or the money deposited in your bank account. It may be increasing every year. So there will be some sense of first the money in the first year, money in second year, third year and so on. So essentially we call that sequence and let us have a look at uh, even numbers. So if we say even numbers, so we have two, four, six, eight and so on. So essentially we have first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and so on. And the way we can, we represent it is as T1 is equal to two. So this is our first term. This is our second term four. This we can write it as two multiplied by two, third term as two multiplied by three and so on. And what we, what we saw in our last chapter was we can generalize this thing to write Tn as two times n. So if we want to get the first term, we replace n by one. So we get t1 as two. If we want second term, we replace n by two, we get two times two as four. Similarly for odd numbers, we have one, three, five, seven, and so on. And for this, if you think of it, you can write the general term as two n minus one. So if you start with one, two minus one is one. If you start with two, two times two, four, minus one, three, and six, minus one, five, and so on. So this is how we write a general term. But it is not necessary that every sequence can be represented by such formulas. One sequence, one very interesting sequence, which we will talk more in later, is called the Fibonacci sequence. So in this, what we have is, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 5, 3, 8, 8, 5, 13, and so on. So what we have here is first term is equal to second term as 1, whereas the third term then is obtained by adding the first term plus second term. So it is 2 is equal to 1 plus 1, right? So this is how we get the second, third term. For the fourth term, we add third term and second term, third term and second term, t3 plus t2. So this will become two plus one, three. Similarly, to get five, we obtain, we add three plus two, we get five. Similarly, for this term, we add five and three, we get eight and so on. So for this in general, we can write tn as tn is equal to tn minus one plus tn minus 2. That is, we add the terms, we add the two terms before it. So for obtaining this term, we add one term before it and one more term before it. 5 plus 3, 8 for 13, 8 plus 5, 13. And we do this for n greater than 2. 
So essentially what I wanted to tell was that a sequence of number does not necessarily have to follow a certain formula like this or in this case it can be some kind of explanation. If we write let's say prime numbers then what do we have for prime numbers? 2, 3, 5, 7 and so on. So for prime numbers you can't define a formula or something like this as well. So this is just a theoretical understanding or a theoretical explanation of uh, what is the sequence of pr prime numbers. But still there is like, yeah, this is the first term, this is second term, third term, fourth term, and so on. So a uh, sequence does not necessarily have to be obtained by some general formula. It can be anything. So in general, we could think of it as a function we can think of sequence as a function with domain as natural numbers. So if you have natural numbers here, that is from 1, 2, 3 and so on. So either the whole set of natural numbers or a subset of natural numbers. And then sequence, what does it do? It maps on, it, it maps it to something. So this can also be thought of as a function. So basically you have the first term as something, second term as something, third term as something, and e either it could be infinite, in which case we call it as infinite sequence, or if it is a subset, then we call it as a finite sequence. So these are just some uh, theoretical understanding. We will keep uh, having a look at this as we continue. Now one more concept is of series. What do we mean when we say series? So let's say we have a sequence a1, a2, a3 and so on an and again. So if we, so this is a sequence, right? a1, a2, a3. So this is the first term of sequence, second term, third term, nth term and so on. So when we represent this as something like this a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on plus a n and continue so and when we write something like this then we call this as the series associated with this sequence let's say we have a sequence 1 3 5 7 this is a finite sequence with four terms then the series associated with this sequence will be 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. This is the series associated with this sequence. One more thing to keep in mind is this, when we say a series, we just mean this representation. So we mean, yeah, this is the first term of the series, second term of the series, third term and fourth term. Only when we say the sum of this series, we actually mean by the actual sum, which is equal to 16 in this case. 7, 5, 12, 15 and 1, 16. So only when we say a sum of a series, we actually refer to the actual sum. Un until then, we just refer to the rep representation, the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, and so on. One more thing, a more compact way of representing this series is, essentially what we are writing here is a1 plus a2 plus a3 and so on up to a n. So this term here is changing a1, a2, a3 and so on up to a n. So we introduce a symbol here. This is called the capital sigma or the summation. So by summation this we mean when you write something like a k. So this means we are adding these terms where this k goes from 1 until n. So this literally means that k value is 1 for the first so we have a1 and then we add up 1 k goes from 1 to n so after 1 we have 2 so a2 plus a3 and so on up to a n for example let's say we have something like uh, let's say a4 plus a5 plus a6 plus a7 and we want to represent it in this form then how do we write this a summation of a k and k here goes from 4 to 7 4 to 7 so this will be 
a way to represent this. Similarly, if we have, let's say, something like T1 plus T2 plus T3, then how do we represent it? We represent it as Tk, where k goes from 1 until 3. So these are just some new notations introduced, and we had a relook at some of the concepts that we had covered in our last lectures. Let's have a quick look at some of the examples. So here we have the general term given by Tn is equal to n minus 1, 2 minus n, 3 plus n. So if we have to find, let's say, the first term, so T1 will be equal to, we just replace, we just substitute uh, 1 in place of n. So we have 1 minus 1, 0. 0 multiplied by anything will be 0. So first term is 0. So if you have T2, so you simply substitute 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 2 minus 2 is again 0. So this will again be 0. T3 will be 3 minus 1 is 2. So 2 multiplied by 2 minus 3 is minus 1, 3 plus 3 is 6. So we have minus 12. Similarly, if someone says to find 20th term or something like that, so T20 will be 20 minus 1, 19. 2 minus 20 will be minus 18. 3 plus 20 will be 23. And if you calculate this, uh, multiplication it will come out to be minus 7866 so this is just an example where if you have the general term of an ap then you just simply substitute in place of n the values and you can find uh, all the values for it another example is we are given the first term here a1 as 1 and we are given the general term as an is equal to a n minus 1 plus 2 for or n greater than or equal to 2. So we need to find the uh, sequence what it is. So let's say we already know 1. So if the first term is 1 in the sequence. So the second term would be you replace n by 2. So a 2 will be equal to a 2 minus 1 a 1 plus 2. So it will be equal to 1 plus 2 equal to 3. So second term will be 3. Similarly third term will be a 3 minus 1 that is a2 plus 2 will be equal to 5. Similarly, we have a4 is equal to a3 plus 2 to 7 and so on. Therefore, the sequence will just be 1, 3, 5, 7, 9 and so on. And if you want to write the corresponding series for it, then we write it as 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 and so on. So these are some examples on their different types of representation of the general term and how we could uh, find or how we could write a series or a sequence from the general term. You can find all the lectures on arithmetic progression in this playlist here and also the lectures on a pair of linear equations in two variables in this uh, playlist here. Also please subscribe to the channel and share it among your friends. Thank you.